trees are an important data abstraction. We've drawn tree structure diagrams before, like this Fibonacci tree. Now we're going to come up with a way of representing the whole tree and all of its contents as data. First, we need to develop some terminology. So there are two metaphors that people use in order to describe trees. One is that trees are like wooden trees, like apple trees, and that gives a recursive description. And the other describes them like family trees a relative description. Let's look at the recursive description first because that's what's going to define our implementation. A tree has a root value and a list of branches. Here's the root value 3, here's one of the branches, and the other branch is this whole subtree here. Now, each branch is a tree, and that's why this is a recursive description. So all there is to this whole tree is just the root value and its list of branches. Those branches have root values, etc., and that defines the entire tree. There are trees that have zero branches, and those are called leaves. So there's a leaf. That's a leaf that's a tree with a root value of 1 and no branches. This recursive description is sufficient to describe everything about a tree, but it's not always the most convenient. So we also use other terminology to talk about trees. Each location in a tree is called a node. So sometimes, even though a tree is nothing but a root and a list of branches, we need to talk about some value deep within the tree. And so the nodes are all the locations of the values, which are scattered throughout the branches or at the root. Each node has a value, and each one of those is the root value of some other tree, because this tree is made up of trees and those trees are made up of trees, etc. But sometimes we want to talk about this whole tree and all of its contents, so we can talk about all of its nodes, those are its locations, or we can talk about all of its values, those are all the numbers that you see on the screen. The reason I call these family trees is that one node can be in a parent relationship with another, or a child relationship. So we say, for instance, that this node is the child of this node. And likewise, this node is the parent of this node. This is often referred to as the root node because it holds the root value of the entire tree. And these notions of parent and child also extend to other familial relationships. So you might say that this one is a grandchild of this two, or that all of these values are descendants of three. Now it's very common that people will talk about the values in the tree by referring to their locations. So we'll often say each parent is the sum of its children, that's the definition of a Fibonacci tree, rather than saying the value of each parent node is the sum of the values of their children. So just be careful that nodes refer to locations, but those locations have values, and so it's common in English to refer to them using the same language. So now you know what a tree is, but there is no built-in type to keep track of trees for us. We have to define our own data abstraction. So the way we'll implement the tree abstraction is using the recursive description, which is that a tree has a root value and a list of branches. So we'll just create a constructor that takes a root value and a list of branches and builds a tree. Each branch is a tree itself. So here's that example. The way we'll actually create this example using a Python expression is to say that I want a tree with a root value of 3 and a list of branches where one of the branches is a tree with a root value of 1, and it's a leaf. It has no branches. So that's this one here. And then the other branch is a tree rooted at 2, which itself has two leaf branches, tree 1 and tree 1. Now when we call this tree function in this nested expression, some value that's built in has to be generated. And in this case, it will be nested lists. So the implementation of our tree abstraction will be using nested lists. 
but we don't want to commit every piece of code we write to this representation, so we'll use the abstraction in order to make sure that if we decide to change the tree implementation later on, it's not too hard to do so without updating our code. So here's the constructor. It takes a root. It takes some branches. By default, there will be an empty list of branches. So that's why I'm able to call tree1. That means tree1 with no branches, a leaf. And then we'll construct a list that contains the root and also contains all the branches. The root of the tree is just the element at index 0 of the tree list. So in this case, the root would be 3. And the branches are a slice containing everything else. So in this case, the branches are the tree containing 1 and the tree containing 2, 1, and 1 as values. And that's all we really need in order to make progress in implementing trees. But we're going to add a little bit more to our data abstraction in order to catch errors as we write code using the abstraction. So before I create the structure that I described, I'm going to go through every branch that was passed into the tree constructor and assert that it is, in fact, a tree. Each tr branch should be a tree. I'm also going to change this expression slightly by calling list on branches so that if branches is some other kind of sequence, it gets converted into a list, and therefore we have a uniform representation of all trees, regardless of how the constructor is called. OK, so we verified the tree definition. We built a representation. Now we just need a function that tells us whether something is a tree or not, because I call it right here. So figuring out whether a value is a tree is a recursive function. The first thing I do is check whether this is a list at all, as opposed to a number. And once I know that it's a list, I check that its length is at least 1, because you need to have the root value no matter what. If neither of these is true, then we return false. It's not a tree. Now, you might not have seen this type of expression before. The type function, which is built in, tells me what kind of value this is, a number, a string, a list, etc. And I can then check whether that's a list or not. So I'm expecting all trees to be represented as lists, because that's the um, representation that I generate with my constructor. Next, I go through for each branch in the branches of the tree, make sure that it's a tree. If it's not a tree, then I return false. And here's where is tree is recursive. If all the branches are trees, then we return true. Finally, I have a function called isLeaf, which takes in a tree and returns the fact that there are no branches. Let's see how we can use this data abstraction in practice. I'm going to load it in and then start building trees. I can build a tree that's just a leaf. And if I ask, is that a leaf? It will tell me it is. In order to build a tree that's not a leaf, I have to give it a list of branches as well. And if this branch is empty, I get my leaf back. But if instead I say I have a tree and then another tree as my two branches, then I have a tree with three nodes. The values are 1, 5, and 6, and they appear in the representation in this nested structure. Now, if I want this tree not to be a leaf, but instead have a branch of its own, then I would add another argument to its constructor where I build another tree. And let's call that tree t. So t has a root value, 1. And also, I can get the values throughout the tree by looking at the branches of t and then looking at their root values. So for instance, if I want to find the value 5, I would do that using my data abstraction by getting the branches of t, getting the branch at element 0, and then getting the root value of that branch. If instead I wanted to ask something about that branch, like is it a leaf, I could just call is leaf directly on the branch 0 of t. It's not a leaf. But what about branch 1? It is a leaf because branch 1 is just 
the tree containing six and no branches. 